everybody and welcome to this week's video. Um, as you can see, I'm out at uh, night this week. Um, I think it'll be a quick video this week and it's, it's even changed from the point when I decided I was going to do it. Now, as most of you probably know by now, at the minute we've got a comet um, which we can actually see um, visually at the moment um, without any aid of binoculars or anything um, this week it seems to have really kicked off and what I was going to do is um, if you can probably tell by the state of me I, was, I wasn't going to bother going to bed um, last night I was just going to get stay up and then about half past one make my way down to Fledborough Viaduct which is about six miles from me but on the viaduct there, and I've filmed some videos there before, some landscape videos. But on the, the viaduct there, you get a really clear view to the north, northeast, and northwest. All you've got is the power stations in the background. The only problem with it there is you do get a lot of pylons and things in the way. Um, so I was going to get in the car and drive down there. Now, what I actually did, I stopped up till 12 and then went to bed until half past one. But, lo and behold, I got all my kit ready in the kitchen, walked out the back door, locked the back door, looked to my right, which is northeast towards our church, and I could actually see the comet directly above the church. So, I thought, hmm, do I really need to drive anywhere? I was so amazed. I mean, I wasn't even expecting to see it till probably on two o'clock when the sky was sort of lighting. But yeah, um, it was literally above the church, so... I thought, well, the best thing to do is to nip to the bottom of the garden, set the tripod up and try and get some shots here. So that is basically what I'm doing. Um, and I'll explain a little bit about what I'm doing as well with the shots. There'll only be one shot this week. Hopefully, it'll come out okay. But if you want to do this yourself, what I would advise you to do is watch um, Alan Wallace's uh, video. Um, he's got his own, uh, basically, astrophotography channel. And he does a lot of what I like to do, which is wide field astrophotography, where you include some of the landscape in. Um, and he does a lot of the photography, again, with just a normal a camera with a, with a lens on. So what I'm doing for this shot, obviously I've got the church or the silhouette of the church um, as the foreground interest which obviously is quite pronounced you can see that on the horizon and then above it I've got the comet just pointing straight down towards it slightly off to the right actually because I've come to the bottom of the garden I don't know you can probably still hear the A1 here uh, it's quite loud um, now settings wise I've tried various things, I think um, if you go to Alan's channel and have a look there he shoots his on the, the uh, south coast, he drives all the way down from Wales to, to take some images and um, I think he shoots at something like ISO 800 f6.3 and one second. Now obviously I, what I'm using as well equipment wise probably need to know that before you know those settings that I'm using. Um, he was using the Sony, I'm not sure which model, but mine's an A7 Mark II, and I've got the Sigma 100-400, which is, if you've seen my previous, my recent videos, you know I've switched to a Tamron 150-600 for my wildlife shooting. Um, but I've, I did say I was gonna keep the Sigma 100-400 for my landscape shots when I want to do that telephoto rather than a wide angle. So I've got the, the Sigma 100-400 on with the MC11 converter so that it'll fit onto the Sony. The Sony's a full frame camera and I'm shooting at probably just over 200 millimeters, which gives me the, the um, church and also the, the comet um, in the same view. Now the thing with obviously shooting the night sky, I don't really want to make this a tutorial, but the thing with shooting the night sky is that um, if you shoot a wide angle shot you can generally get quite a long exposure because you, you're pulling wide out so you're getting a massive expanse of the sky. If you start using a telephoto lens your um, shutter speed that you can use 
comes comes down so you have to use a faster and faster shutter because you're focusing on a small area and obviously the stars move so if you do like a 30 second exposure at 200 millimeters you'll get the streak of the stars across the sky which I don't want I want them to be you know quite pin sharp as much as I can so what I'm doing is I'm shooting at um, about 1.3 seconds Right, so my settings, I'm at ISO 1000, because I think that's acceptable on this camera for a night sky shot. Um, F5.6 and 1.3 seconds, which gives me nice sharp stars. Um, it gives me nice sharp stars, but it also gives me enough light, I can actually just see the, see the, the church and the silhouette of the trees around the church with the comet coming down to it when I have a look at the shot back. Um, if I do it like at a second and ISO 800 which I think is what Alan uses on, on his um, shot, um, I can't actually see anything at all hardly. I can just about make out the comet and that's because I think he was shooting on the south coast and there was a lot of um, towns and things on the coast so that was lighting up the whole area below here there's not an awful lot so hopefully that's explained that a little bit right so when you're doing something like this obviously the kit you need well I'll, I'll tell you basically what you need to, to do a shot like this now first thing is a really sturdy tripod especially when you're shooting with um, something like a telephoto lens where you're focusing on a small area <coughs> excuse me uh, where you're focusing on a small area you really want it to be planted solid so that it's not going to move and if you see I'm also using um, a cable release simply because I don't want to be touching the camera if you haven't got one of these you can use a self timer um, now once you've got done that, what I would suggest you do is, is try different settings to see what works for you. Now what I'm going to be doing with this shot is, I'm going to look at some of the single exposures I've got, but what I'll probably end up doing is um, stacking a number of shots in a program called Sequator. Um, now that'll allow me to, basically when you stack a shot, if you've got a one second shot or a two second shot, and you stack... 10 two second shots together it basically acts like a 20 second exposure so what you're doing is you're increasing the amount of light you've got available to yourself by stacking all those shots on top of each other now what sequator allows you to do is to um, freeze the landscape so keep that separate and then stack everything in the sky and hopefully what i'll be able to do is stack the comet on top of itself just like the stars it's moving and then keep the, the landscape where it is because if, if you use something like a deep star, sky stacker what I think that will do is if you try and stack something with the landscape in there obviously the landscape will be blurred because it'll try and stack all the stars on top of each other but your solid block of landscape is, is moving relative to the stars if you see what I mean so they will end up as like a blurred image which is what you don't want with sequator you can actually choose the landscape to keep it as it is and it'll stack everything above it on top of each other so i'm absolutely ecstatic to see this you can really see when you take photographs and when you can see it with your eyes something slightly different in the sky to what we get used to why sort of ancient people sort of worship these things and thought they were portents of doom and things but yeah absolutely fantastic I could really urge you all, if you get the chance, to get out and have a look at it. Um, especially, you know, if you, what you want is a nice clear night. Look to uh, the northeast, and that, what I would do is check on a program called um, Stellarium. If you go onto your PC and type in Stellarium, I think there's an online version now that you can just tap straight into, and just look at. Uh, they've got the actual comet logged in on there and its pathway because obviously it will change over the, the days and I think probably the next couple of weeks is going to be the best time to see it after that it'll start to fade because I think it's going away from us already um, so yeah really you know I can't recommend it enough I mean obviously I'm absolutely knackered but 
yeah, I don't know if you can tell my enthusiasm walking out that back door and seeing that up in the sky absolutely phenomenal I will see you next time for another video um, as I say I'm working on a few at the minute so this is just one that I thought I had to do because it's, it's something that very rarely happens get out there and do it yourself it's pretty easy if you've got any comments about how to do it or you want more information as I say search it up on YouTube you can stick a comment in the comments below and ask me anything you want and if I can give you any help I will um, I always answer every comment that I get and yeah I've really enjoyed it I'm going to spend another probably hour out here now taking some more images and then uh, I'm off to bed so see you next time if you've not subscribed to the channel then please consider subscribing um, you know we're getting towards a thousand now it'd be really great if we can get there before October when's my birthday so I'm hoping to get there before then but we'll see what happens um, plenty more landscape work to come on the site plenty more um, wildlife to come as well you never know maybe a little bit more astro as well as we go along but who knows anyway i'll see you soon bye